Good afternoon, and I'm really happy to be here today. I've learned a lot. I've heard about COMP because I'm in the Office of Strategic Coordination along with Trish. Um, so it's great to see uh, how much it's been interacting with um, a lot of different programs. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of, teeny bit about its future interactions with our new somatic cell genome editing program. So this program is just launching now, and it's really designed to take advantage of the opportunities provided by incredible advances in the genome editing field, where these editing techniques are getting to be so uh, versatile that um, basically they're, they're uh, democratizing therapeutic development. So there are a lot of people interested now in making therapies for many, many diseases. And there are, as you know, are thousands of presently incurable diseases that at least theoretically could be cured or at least treated well by uh, genome editing approaches. And for some of these conditions, at least, uh, a single treatment could be cu a cure. There's been a huge uh, uptick in interest in doing these trials. And this, this uh, uh, article in New Scientist came out in May of 2017. But as of today, in the US, there are no clinical trials that have CRISPR tools in patients. They're being used to modify cells ex vivo outside, and then those cells are going back in the patients. There are just a couple of those. But the ones that are in trial are all from uh, one company, Sangamo, and they're all based on zinc fingers, which have been around for, for quite a while. So these are actually the most advanced uh, clinical tools right now. And you can see that they're really only being studied in, in two diseases, MPS1 and 2, and hemophilia A and B. So there's a lot of promise, so there's a lot of potential promise, there's a lot of hints out there that this is going to be revolutionary, but so far um, it hasn't happened. And so a little over a year ago, the NIH had a workshop to which we invited experts from academia, from industry, and from uh, other federal agencies such as the FDA to come and talk to us about where the gaps and opportunities are in the field if there was a, a potential for the Common Fund um, to, to fill uh, any gaps. And actually, this group, as you can imagine, came up with an awful lot of gaps um, and a long list, and so, some of which are shown here. So one of the major gaps was more relevant both human and animal models for testing uh, new editors and delivery methods uh, preclinically. There's also a paucity of cell and tissue specific delivery systems. And uh, many of the editors are, are error prone or um, not, or, or, you know, not up to par. So the people suggested that we need uh, more editors and um, especially alternatives to the CRISPR type of nucleases that cut the DNA and can cut, cause DNA damage. There was a request for standardized assays for measuring off-target effects because nobody really knows what, how many off-target uh, effects are, are okay and how many are not and how you actually test them and prove that you have a low number, what even a low number means. And also long-term cell tracking assays to fulfill the, the FDA goal of, of uh, following the patients for many years after the treatment. So we got together a working group of NIH staff, who's, uh, which is led by Dr. Chris Austin, who you heard about from today, and we have uh, program staff from over a dozen of the institutes and centers at NIH. And we thought about if we're going to design a Common Fund program, we need to fulfill the Common Fund criteria, which hopefully all of the comp people already know. But bottom line is the Common Fund programs are usually five or ten years, and they need to fulfill goals in a short amount of time. And those, how they fulfill those goals, they, there should be deliverables that actually affect the way that biomedical uh, research or clinical care is done over the next few years. And they need to be synergistic and cross-cutting with the missions of the institutes and multiple institutes. The more institutes, the better, and they should be unique, something uh, nobody else is, is actually doing. You've obviously heard some about some common fund programs today. And so we looked into what the other federal agencies were doing. We made sure not to duplicate, but to try to uh, synergize with those efforts. And we designed a program that is really based on uh, three different types of activities. So one activity is technology development. We thought we'll have a couple of initiatives, one on creating better, safer, uh, more accurate editors, and another one on creating better, more accurate, safer delivery technologies. 
And then we'll build a couple of testing systems. We'll, we'll generate testing systems in a number of animal models because we don't know which one is the best for everything. And we did include the mouse, of course. Um, but we also have human systems so that we can compare um, the efficacy of the editors and the delivery tools in human cells. And then once these uh, new technologies pass muster, the data, the protocols, et cetera, will go into a, a toolkit for the community so the community can look up and say, oh, I want a delivery vehicle that goes to the kidney but doesn't go to the liver. Is there one that this program has um, characterized? And they could find it, find out where to get it, find out how to use it. And so what we're hoping to do is fill this gap that, of uh, safe and effective tissue-specific methods for in vivo targeting, that is, putting an editor in the body, having it go where we want it to go and edit uh, specifically. So we're leaving it to others to pick up the tools and create um, their own uh, pre-IND packages. So just to go quite quickly through the initiatives, so the, the stage that we're at is this uh, FOAs went out about um, nine months ago. Uh, we've had applications come in and be reviewed and we've just now funded a, a large cohort of, uh, of projects, about 20 two projects um, and the total commitment for this program over the next five to six years is around 190 million dollars. So initiative one is encompasses both the small and large animal reporter uh, strains that I, I told you about as well as testing centers to use those strains to test the delivery and editor uh, reagents and it's led by Dr. Oleg Mirachenko from the Office of Re Research Infrastructure Program and so this is our first major um, comp connection. Um, its goals are to develop both mice and large uh, reporter animals to detect both on and off target genome editing. So the major goal of these within the program is to validate the delivery vehicles created in, in one of the uh, technology development initiatives, but they'll also be working with the editor initiative to test new editors. And their uh, scope includes uh, uh, testing in all individual cell types, including the germ cells, because we want to be able to say whether our delivery vehicles affect the germ line or not, and hopefully they do not, because we want to avoid, at this point, uh, germ cell editing. And the timeline is, right now, we just, just this past month, uh, made two awards, uh, one to Dr. Jason Haney from the um, Baylor College of Medicine, and another to Stephen Murray of the Jackson Lab very strong comp connection, so you can see how we're going to take advantage of the comp, um, oops, sorry, the comp um, pipelines and expertise. And so um, one, one theme that you'll see throughout the few, next few slides is that in the first two years, um, all the components really are supposed to generate their resources and develop proof of concept. And af after the end of two years, they're all supposed to start collaborating with each other. And in this case of the uh, small animal testing centers, they're really charged with validating those delivery systems. There are other things they can do. They could collaborate with the editors. They can do all sorts of things if they have time and funds or interest, but um, they are really charged with helping us validate them because we thought that was an important component of the delivery vehicles is to have independent validation of where they go and what they do. And so the timeline for um, the large animal reporters is, is a little bit different. It's, um, we did just make awards to a group of uh, investigators who will make the reporter strains. We have a different FOA out for the testing centers because we thought these might be two different uh, types of people that would apply. Um, and so right now the, the role of the, this group is to generate the reporter pigs and non-human primates and they'll submit them uh, when the large animal testing centers come on on board. So, and of course, because the, these animals take a lot longer to develop, um, to reach maturity, the timelines for their development is longer. So they're not going to have, they're not going to be ready at the end of year two to collaborate with the rest. But we thought this was an important investment and hopefully at least the pigs will have in year three or four to start testing after the delivery vehicles have been validated by the small animal testing centers. So initiative two is the other testing system initiative, and that's for the human cell systems. And these are based um, on uh, organoid type systems or any kind of system that tries to replicate normal human biology on a platform that's reproducible. The platform has to be amenable to sequencing basis approaches to 
show off target effects as genomic off target effects as sort of a control, but really the point is to look at unintended biological effects like immunogenicity or changes in biological function or even uh, genotoxicity or, or carcinogenicity. And that one, again, we have just made uh, four awards for this. We're very excited that of this group, two of them have just lost their uh, ESI status, so we have some um, young dynamic people on this group. Um, and they'll spend the first two years creating their platforms, showing proof of concept, and demonstrating the capacity to look at, to identify adverse effects on biology. And then they'll start collaborating with the rest of the group uh, really as they see fit, whether to test delivery vehicles or editors or maybe to create a different type of platform based on a, a target uh, tissue from an, another group. The third initiative is one of the technology de development initiatives to create the new delivery systems. And um, this is basically the, the focus could be on either a a single cell type to deliver specifically to one cell type or to multiple cell types. But the idea was that the technology should improve um, uh, the clinical applications. And uh, again, as I said, the, the one of the major goals of this program is to develop delivery vehicles that have been validated independently. So it's required by for this group to have their their tested systems then validated at the small animal testing centers. And then, so we've divided this initiative into two, two sections where the first three years are for them to develop and test, and validate their systems in small animals. And then if they pass that and do that, then we'll give them a couple of more years. So this is really one of those types of projects that ends after three years if they're unsuccessful. And uh, if they are successful in the small animal testing centers, they'll get more money to scale up the production and optimize their system so that they can then go into large animals. And we have quite a broad range of um, investigators here. We have nine, uh, nine uh, projects that we've just funded, and you can see that they're addressing both viral and non-viral delivery methods, and we have some quite um, innovative technologies here too, including extracellular vesicles and uh, peptide nucleic acids. So this is quite a broad um, range of delivery vehicles. And the other thing that we're happy about is that together they're addressing uh, six or seven different uh, organ systems in the human body with um, three groups uh, trying to target the brain, the nervous system, and three trying to target the lung, a couple uh, targeting muscle, a couple targeting um, the hemopoietic system, and one the, the inner ear. Initiative four is the technology development initiative to create new editors or improved editors. And um, this, is, this one really is focused on in, in improving either the specificity, the efficiency, or the functionality of uh, the editors. And these could be nucleases or non-nucleases. They could be epigenetic modifiers or uh, RNA editors, really anything. Um, and they could identify novel enzymatic activities or improve on known, uh, uh, known activities. And we also um, fostered uh, strategies for manipulating inaccessible genomes or genomic regions. And so even though we only have three awards, we're kind of covering all those bases that we had in the FOA. We have some of the leaders in the field for these uh, editors or initiatives, and so Jennifer Doudner is going to uh, identify novel uh, cast proteins and DNA repair systems that be could be used for editing. Stephen Ecker is, uh, uh, address is generating editors for the mitochondrial genome and mitochondrial RNA, and David Liu will improve on his repertoire of, of base editors. And again, within the first two years, they should show proof of concept. They have a new editor or an improved editor that can do something. Then they'll start sharing the editors, maybe with the delivery systems to get them packaged, or maybe with the biology systems to show that they can edit specific genes and specific cell types. And then last but not least, Initiative 5, the Dissemination Coordinating Center, is going to be led by Colin Fletcher, who you all know, our other comp connection. Um, and its goal is really... Um, to establish this coordinating center that's going to help the NIH 
pull this all together and make it happen. So they have three major roles. One is to help coordinate, um, providing logistical and administrative assistance and helping the exchange of information and discussion among the consortium members. They'll also be responsible for putting together the data in this toolkit and making it accessible to the community. And they'll, call, they'll provide collaboration support. They're gonna set up a system to uh, manage a, a collaborative opportunity fund that will help the uh, uh, investigators within the consortium share and cross-test and evaluate each other's technologies. So unfortunately, I can't tell you who the awardee for that is gonna be because that, this one's gonna be awarded in, uh, a little later in FY19, but we have gone through the review and identified um, a group that we would like to fund and the funding plan is working its way up through the <laughs> NIH system. Um, but we're very happy with uh, the awardee, and they're on a little bit shorter timeline than everybody else because they need to get on the ground and start running. So in year one, they'll start developing the pipelines and the procedures and the policies for the consortium, and then in year, their year two, they'll start the collaboration, et cetera, funds. So perhaps most importantly for this audience, um, there are a few additional uh, funding opportunities on the street. The, the bad news is that the receipt date is in just a couple of weeks, October 18th. We have reissued the <laughs> Everybody leaves and starts typing. Um, we've reissued the um, the uh, human cell platform uh, testing system, FOA, the one to develop new delivery systems and the one to develop new editors. Uh, we've also um, published a, a new FOA uh, called Innovative Technologies to Non-Invasively Monitor Genome Edited Cells in Vivo. And that one really is to develop tools or technologies to enable the long-term longitudinal monitoring of genome edited cells in people um, so that we can fulfill that FDA mandate to, to track people over time. And we, we think it would be great to actually be able to see what happens to those cells over time. So this is a little bit pie in the sky, um, but we're supporting either the discovery of novel approaches to label and track these cells or improvements or adaptations over pre-existing technologies. And um, we're really interested to see what we're gonna get for this one. So the only other thing that's planned is very soon in December, we will have a kickoff meeting for everyone to meet and start talking and collaborating. So. Thank you.